Good day folks, today in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to assemble and create time lapses on your iPad or iPhone using LumaFusion. I'll also go over some tools here that will help you along, so let's just jump right in and get started. So when it comes to creating time lapses on an iPhone or iPad, there's no really easy, simple, uh, streamlined way to do it. I'm sure down the road that is going to come, but right now there are some tools available to us to really help us along. And uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to be using LumaFusion. If you're not sure what LumaFusion is, it's basically, it's a nice full featured editor for your iPad or iPhone. In fact, LumaFusion is all I use nowadays. It's what I edit all my YouTube videos on, my drone videos, my GoPro videos. I am a 100% mobile editor. That means I edit everything on my iPad. I film everything thing on my iPhone which is what I'm filming with right now unless of course I'm filming with a GoPro or a drone so anyways let's get started here but before we get into it I'm gonna go over a few tools here that will help you along they are not necessary uh, but uh, you might be interested in them now the first thing here is the Apple card reader this one here is a lightning port they also sell it in a USB-C version if you're using the new 2018 iPad Pro this is just a quick simple way to get your time-lapse sequences over to your camera roll which is what you're gonna need to do in order to assemble them if you're filming your time-lapse on a GoPro you you can also connect your GoPro wirelessly and use the GoPro app to transfer all the files over. Alternatively, if you're using the iPad Pro 2018 model with the USB-C port, you can plug your GoPro directly into the USB-C port and it'll prompt you to transfer over the media that way as well. The next thing here is the Apple Pencil. This is the second generation, goes with the new iPad Pro 2018. If you're going to get into mobile editing, I definitely recommend getting an Apple Pencil. It just makes things so much easier and it kind of gives you that kind of fine control similar to a mouse. They work so well that once you start using one, you'll probably find it hard to use an iPad without it. The next items I have here are wireless hard drives. Basically, these are both the exact same kind of hard drive. One has a solid state drive in it and the other one is just a traditional hard drive. They're both by Western Digital and this one here is called the My Passport Wireless Pro and this one is the My Passport Wireless SSD because it has a solid state drive in it. Now, for the most part, they function exactly the same way. There are a few differences, however. Uh, first off is price. This is a one terabyte model and and uh, this is about four to five hundred dollars. I'm not sure of the exact price. So it is quite pricey. Uh, the benefit to it is that it's very durable. Because it's a solid state drive, this thing is rated to be dropped from one meter and you won't damage the internal disc. So that's really good for adventure photographers. If you're going to have this out in the field, you never know what's going to happen to it. And, uh, you know, definitely it is a little bit more rugged. And the other thing is it is a little bit faster because it is a solid state drive. This one here just has a regular internal disc and uh, it is pretty delicate. If you drop this thing, chances are you are going to uh, damage the disc inside and you could end up losing a lot of media. If you get the non SSD of these hard drives, you can get a model that has much more storage. For example, this one here is the three terabyte and it's about 169 bucks compared to four or 500 for one terabyte. You can see it is a much more economical drive. Now the big benefit to having these drives is first off they're wireless. So that means you can connect it to your iPad wirelessly and transfer media back and forth quite easily. They can fully integrate right into LumaFusion so you can pull your files right off this drive nice and easy. You don't have to transfer them first to your camera roll. Now both these drives have a card reader on them and basically what that does is allow you to offload your content out in the field right to the drive. So you can pull a memory card out of your drone or GoPro or camera plug it into the slot there and it will automatically start to transfer your content over and it'll be backed up nice and safe and you can continue filming. The nice thing about that is when you get home and you're ready to edit, all your content's already on a drive, you can plug this directly into a laptop or desktop and then it just functions as a 3.0 drive. The other nice thing about these drives is that they have a built-in battery, so you're able to power this drive without plugging it in. Um, it's rated for about 10 hours, I do believe, and it's fast enough that you can actually stream 4K video off this without any problems. The other nice thing is that it does act as a power bank. If you're out in the field and say your GoPro is getting a little bit low, you can actually plug your GoPro into the USB port there and charge it up. You can also charge up your smartphone. Basically anything that can be charged off a USB port. Now the reason I'm showing you these drives is that when it comes to creating time lapses, once once you film the time lapse, say on a GoPro and you have a sequence, you then have to get that image sequence over to your iPhone or your iPad. And like I said, you can use the card reader and just transfer it right over to your camera roll and that works fine. The problem is sometimes storage on these iPads are very limited and uh, you can only hold so much uh, media at one point. That's why I like to use external drives keeps things organized and I'm not using up all the storage on my iPad. I can just import the time-lapse media in via LumaFusion and then when I'm done just delete it, it'll still remain on the hard drive. So anyways, that's enough about the tools I use. Let's get set up here and we will start editing a time-lapse. 
So let's get going here. Now I'm just going to film the iPad from a top down view uh, instead of doing a screen capture because then you can't really see where I'm clicking and what I'm doing and dragging. Uh, this way you can kind of see everything that I do. So let's go ahead and we're going to launch our LumaFusion. Now what we're going to do is click down here and we're going to create a new project. So I'm just going to leave it at my project six and we're going to make sure that the frame rate is on 30 frames per second and uh, you can actually set your ratio to whatever you want. Uh, for the most part, you're going to leave it at 16 by nine. So we're going to go ahead and create the new project and you can see we have an empty timeline here. So before we drag our photo sequence down to the timeline to assemble our time lapse, we have to change a couple global settings. And mainly it's to do with the image duration. By default it's set at like five seconds I believe. So every time you drag an image down it's going to play for about five seconds. For a time lapse we don't want that because if we drag a hundred photos down we're going to have this super long time lapse and there's going to be no motion in it. So what we're gonna do is click on this little button here and then we're gonna go down to global settings. And under photo, we're gonna swipe that until we put it all the way down to one frame. So that way each frame of the photo sequence is gonna play for one frame. And then we can just go out of that. Now at this point, we gotta locate our photo sequence. So if you have uploaded your photos to your camera roll, you would just go to your camera roll, your photos, and wherever they're stored on your camera roll. For me, I've got the sequence stored on my wireless drive here. So I am gonna power it on. You can see there it's now powered on. We'll just set that off to the side. Now before we can access this drive, we do have to connect to its Wi-Fi. These wireless drives broadcast their own Wi-Fi signal. So we're just gonna go into our settings and connect to the Wi-Fi. The password is usually listed right on the front on a sticker. So I've gone ahead and connected to it. So we're gonna relaunch our LumaFusion again. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that icon there. And now we're gonna select Western Digital. You can see it's got the drive listed there. And now we're going to go into the My Passport. We're going to go to Storage. And I've got the time lapse in a folder called Time Lapse. And uh, we're going to go into this one here called Grass. As you can see here, there's the image sequence. There's quite a few. I think there's about 500 images there. Now instead of dragging one image at a time, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button here. And that allows us to select multiple files at once. So then we click on this button and you can see there it's now highlighted everything. Now all we have to do is drag it down as you can see there. Now what it has to do here, you can see this number here, it's got to download all the images from the wireless hard drive to the iPad. It's going to put it in your files app under uh, imported media I believe which we can delete later. Now if you had dragged them in directly from your camera roll, you would be skipping this part because the files are already stored on the iPad, so you don't have to go through this download procedure. So I'm just gonna skip ahead of this part and once they're all done, then we'll continue. So it's all done importing everything in now. It didn't take too long, about two minutes, so that's not too bad. You can see it created a new folder here called Downloaded Media, and that's where everything that we just downloaded is gonna be stored. At this point, we don't need this drive on anymore. We can power it off because everything we need is now stored on the iPad locally. So you can see it's given us a preview here and uh, we can scrub through and we'll see it. We can hit play. Maybe a little choppy at this point. It's not gonna be as smooth as the final rendered video, but it kind of gives you a preview of what's going on. Now at this point we need to render it before we can do any kind of editing to it because right now it's just a bunch of still images and uh, we'd have to go through each individual one and copy and paste, which would take a long time. So what we're gonna do is render it as a file. We're gonna click on movie there photos that way it's saved right to our photos i'm going to leave mine at 4k but you could really render it out in whatever resolution you want what's really important here we want to save it as the highest quality possible by default LumaFusion renders at 50 megabits per second uh, but we're going to put it right up to ultra and then we're going to export it and as you can see there it doesn't take too long to export because it's only about a 16 second time lapse so now if I go to my camera roll, you can see here is the time lapse that we just rendered out. You can see there's some movement there because I had it actually on a slider, a little GoPro time lapse slider. I did a review on it back a few months ago, back last summer actually. I'll include the links to it down below if you do want to get a slider. Uh, they do uh, make some really interesting time lapses. So we're back at the project with all the still images. We can get rid of that now, so we can just delete that. You don't have to delete it, you could just leave it in there if you want, but now we're gonna create a new project. So now at this point we can do some color correcting to it if we want, we can open it up. You know, they've got some color presets here, you know, if you wanna mess around with them, do some really uh, weird stuff, you can make it look like night. You know, kinda of give you some interesting effects. 
you know that one looks kind of nice too you can make it black and white make it a little bit more dramatic now of course we could then go over and apply a LUT to it I've got a bunch of LUTs on here that I've imported uh, but LumaFusion does come with its own uh, set of LUTs including a filmic LUT but I find they work well for a lot of different things uh, you can see there it's kind of changed the look if we hide it you can see the difference there a little bit more contrast looks really nice you know you could do all kinds of things at this point you could go in you could sharpen it you could blur it uh, there's all different kinds of effects in here um, you can add some vignetting if you want you know that sometimes adds a nice effect and then once we're done we just go ahead and render it out and there's our final time lapse so as you can see it's pretty easy and the steps I just showed here is pretty well the same whether you're doing it on an iPad or an iPhone. Now one last thing I am going to show you here before I go. Once you're done editing and you've rendered everything out and you want to delete the files that we just brought into LumaFusion, we can do so simply by launching our files app. We're going to go into the LumaFusion folder within the files app. We're going to click on library media. And there you can see we have a Western Digital Drive. This is where all the files we bring in uh, from the wireless drive is going to be stored and you can see there there's all the files so we can just select them we'll hit select all and then we'll delete if you had imported them in with your a dongle into your camera roll you would just go into your camera roll and delete them that way so yeah folks basically that's it for my video i'll include the links down below to all the hardware i had in this video i just want to emphasize that these are not needed um, I did showcase them and I did use them myself, but they are definitely 100% not necessary for creating time lapses on your iPad. They are a handy tool to have and they do make things a little bit easier. Plus they give you a nice backup location for your files if you are a mobile editor and you don't really use a computer or a laptop. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I just want to point out that I'm going to be doing some giveaways this summer on Facebook. So make sure you check out my Facebook page. All my giveaways going forward are going to be done via my Facebook page. I'll leave the link for it down below as well. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one.